troubleshooting. Why I do this is because I want to literally talk about troubleshooting, but you guys are really going to see you've been through it before. So you're going to have a lot of questions that are going to be answered because you already did it. So now, I don't have a link. That's the first thing. Remember what happened? Do my frequency matches? That's the first thing I want to check. Do they match in all your cases? Yeah. Not whatsoever, right? Okay. Off mode. Transmitter was off. But besides that, the ODE was actually powered off as well. Polarization. In this case, it's really not important because it's on a bench test, but if we were to grab the ODEs and just start twisting them around, cross pull, you will see a 20 degree difference. You will have a good MNC, but your RSSI will be 20 degrees apart. And will you say that 20 will be equal on both sides? No. no. You won't have 40 and 60 on one side. That's, what the, that's the giveaway. It's oh, 20 right, degree difference right. so, from one to so zero. So 20, 20 dB out is like a phase shift. Yes. Yeah. That's why it's shifted. Now, ACM settings for the pluses radios, they have the feature ACM enable or disable. In the past, you have to have either both on or both off. And the new radios for iron and links, they're always on by default. Data path settings. Again, for the TDM radios, you have Ethernet. E1 plus T1, and the new ones is only Ethernet based, so you don't really need to worry about that. I didn't use ODUs are swapped. Does that happen to you? Mm -hmm. Somebody went out to the type and took the wrong ODU. God. Realistically, what could happen is somebody could take the wrong IDU. The IDU I'm really not concerned because you can always reconfigure that, but the ODU, you guys have to swap it physically, right? Imagine doing that on a tower. Have to climb up, bring that again, all that thing. Loopback mode. We didn't talk about loopback. Loopback is to test the actual IDU and OMU if, it, if it's working correctly. To loopback auto, and it will give you a lock. If it comes up with a lock and a good MNC value, the IDU itself is fine. Fuses. All of them powered on, no problem. If I have no lights, you have to go and check the fuse as well. Core MNC. What causes poor MNC? Too high transfer power. So right now, if I crank up the power, it's gonna go straight down my MNC, okay? Target RSSI. If it doesn't really match, ATPC is gonna try to kick out the power every time. I have cable issues. That's the first thing to check. Jeremy, you're on the right track. One of my app cables is not the best, but it will work. But when you spot something like that, that's the first thing to check, right? Come in, check out the end connector. Even if it has moisture on it, probably replace it. Interference. Now, interference shows up this way. RSS size will be good, but your MNC will not be able to go any higher at all. That's the use interference. It, there's a practical test for interference. Turn the far side off or reboot it and do a link test on the local side. When the far side is powered down, the value should be negative 90. If it's not negative 90, somebody is transmitting on your frequency or close to it. Okay? That's a good tip right there. And pretty simple. Okay? Just reboot the far side and let a link test run. 99. Low RSSI. Alignment. Okay? Don't call me and say, I cannot. What is my RSSI problem? <laughs> I'm going to go back. Go back and align it. What did I tell you? Number one installation frustration. Go back and align it. Polarization. If it's cross polarized, that 20 degree difference is going to be really noticeable. Waveguide. You think waveguide is really expensive, however, you have all the access that come with it. Again, target RSSI. Command set when you know. Status morning will give you the MC value, RSSI, BDRs, FDRs, log status, and TR. Status PLLs. Status PLL, the ODU itself has a series of PLLs. The PLL for transmit and receive, OMU, and IF PLL. In a normal link, when you do status PLL, everything should be one. Everything should be locked when you're transmitting. If you have one side transmitting but not receiving, one that receives status PLL is going to be zero. At that point, no way around it, RMA. Not even worth it, just send it back. Status port or TDM, what we said before, we want to check if there's some traffic hitting the Ethernet port. 
for the link for the products apex plus status support for the new products status show okay. troubleshooting tools link test favorite command really simple really useful for inference and live status loopback if the loopback comes back positive it's one and good MSC value the problem is not the actual IDE or the one Diagnostics. Diagnostics command, it's only a file checksum really. It doesn't go into details of voltage or anything like that. It's in my calibration file there. Am I missing something in the file server? But it's really not a critical troubleshooting tool. It's just a, everything is in the radio, basically, file wise. Syslock and lock level. Syslock. What happens at the end of a read, right boys? It clears a lot. So you want to have a syslock server pointing to that. Debug. I like debug a lot. Debug you can do with ping, you can SSH, you can tell it, and do a route. You can see what route's taken back to the gateway. Uptime. If you think your radio unlocked, but it rebooted, do the uptime command. It will give you how long it's been powered up after the read. Again, troubleshooting here is no link lock, no link. So you're doing the link test, we check the RFC, RF, RFTX frequency, modulations, the uh, duplex spacing, channel bandwidth. No link at all, alignment, link alignment. Again, ODU polarization, are they mounted correct polarized or are they both high side of trans or low side transfers? MEC is too high or big errors are showing when running lead test. Okay, this is again, IF cable problem. That's the only thing that can impact the MSC. Can you be clear on MSC high versus low? Like, so MSC, a high MSC, Will a be bad MSC is like fifteen. Make 10, yes. And 15, a good 10. MSC is like neg forty. Yes. Remember, you want to have negative thirty-five point twenty and above. You hold that ten to the four pump link. So anything below twenty really is going to be driving the QPSK. You want a higher absolute value. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which means <laughs> lower errors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My RSSI is too low, has to be alignment or the power on each side. So we check the transfer power. We are going to send you guys slides. Yeah, this slide is again. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going through them because a lot of things that we've talked about, it's all described here, but we already went through it and you guys saw physically what are the effects of having things in the wrong places. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's good, but no packets, but packet loss of curing. When you have packet loss, check your, I check your Ethernet cable first from your switch to your actual data port. That's the first thing to check. And then the latency on the link. We use a Fluke. Uh, okay. They, we use their link runner, I think it is now. I don't know, we've got like a $1,400 Fluke box that just tells us whether it'll do a gig, 10 meg, or 100, and it'll also test the shielding. Oh, good. So you just, you know, it's. I can't remember. I can't remember. Tester. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it, it basically, t it's more than a continuity test. I think it's a link running because it has a wire map and has the, uh, it yeah. passes the voice over IP or gigi test. Yes, I, yeah. yeah, I think that's it's a link running. Yeah. yeah, but it's a nice, and then you turn it on as one button test. And we, we gave one of those to every one of our wireless techs so that any time they're testing a cable, we don't have to know if the cable's good. That's good. Where you manage over the link. Remember, if you're using IBM, you will be able to manage the link across the wireless interface. If you use OBM, you have to go across the wireless link, go down to your switch, and then go back to the management interface. Reset button functions. Call for more than two seconds, but less than six, the unit will do the following. The IP address will be reset to factory default, the CLI management password will be reset to default. The web interface will be back to default. SNMP strings uh, will be back to default. CLI prompt will be back to default. 
If you hold it for more than six seconds, the unit will reset the system configuration to factory default, meaning the RF settings, but the items in number one will not be affected. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, shoot away. Real quick to go over um, yeah. radios A and B. Which one's the high and which one's the low? High is the B, A is the low. So when I do a model and it tells me my ODU is, is A, how do I know that it should be the A? And when your PCN is going to be a location per site. So the A radio, you're going to see low site, is going to be on, let's say, Woodson, and on black is going to be my B site. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your PCN states where it should go. So there's nowhere I can check in the radios. You know, the, the radios tells you which is connected to the IW. It'll be on your configuration report. Oh, yeah. You get that, you get to the radios. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do all configuration for, for you guys. Mm -hmm. What's the lifespan of the Giga Orion series and how long do you guys plan to support it? We'll support all our products until the end. Until the end? <laughs> <laughs> until they stop. No, yeah, until they until we stop. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. No, support is still going to no, be available. It's, it's going to be in production for a long time. I don't know yeah. the exact amount of time. Uh, just I can just tell you the most recent example is Giga Plus. Right? We talked a lot about Giga Plus. And Giga still, Plus, we started shipping in 2010, and we're still shipping it. Obviously, we're moving for people to the new product. If right. you really want Giga Plus, it is available. And it will be available, generally available, for any customer who has built network on that product platform for a number of years. I don't know exactly how long, but you know we'll keep we'll keep going. As far as support, repairs, maintenance, that's ongoing. We're still supporting generation one radios. Oh wow! Okay. You know, so you know, I would say there's not a hard set time, but but it's okay, it's, it's a long time. time. It's a long term. John, thanks. Appreciate it. Sure. Okay. okay. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Say hi to Brian for me. Yeah, we will. Oh, don't forget your uh, certification over there. Safe <laughs> travels. Volt meter. Take care. Thank we'll do it right now if you want. Thank you. You're certified. Yes, anybody else. Got questions? Yeah, I'm certified. See you guys right now. So we just do this stuff. The only reason I ask is because um, when we go out and build infrastructure to support stuff, I mean, we're, we're like, 10 to 15 year minimum, you know, when we roll out with stuff and uh, you know, build our power distribution plants and things like that. It's, so I was just curious, is this something that we're gonna be able to rely well, on for the next 10 to 15 years? Yes, for, as a product. and uh, I'll further that. We're on to our third generation now where replacements need to replace right. or upgrade are using the exact same antenna interface. Okay. So for example, uh, they're making them backwards compatible. Yeah, and these guys are going in now and they bought the, well the Apex was different, but we came up with an adapter. Mm -hmm. uh, so they put up an antenna seven, eight years ago. Right. And it fit a certain radio. And we still so hear a new radio. Thoughtfully engineering yeah. things and forward thinking, that's great. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, 10 years from now, let's say so, I mean, right. the radios are going to be way better than that. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be cheap. Okay. It's going to be cheaper for you to just pop in a replacement. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah. Sure. That's the diagram they drew for me. Well, uh, yeah. Do you want to put it in a frigid home? Yeah. But <laughs> Trango as a company is known for long-term long support. Not having to drag around a ton.